One of the pet peeves that I always have is going out into the wilderness with a black rifle. And honestly, it's not even just in the wilderness, whether you're in urban settings or carrying a gun in a backpack, there's a lot of different arguments for adding some color to your build. And I know a lot of people like to just add some Cerakote or spray paint because it looks cool. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's a free country, you can do what you want. And I do like the look of a clean Cerakote job like my 10.3 5.56 here. But at the end of the day, when I have a hunting gun that I'm actually out in the wilderness with, I do prefer to do some spray paint. I've got a couple different methods that I will use when I'm spray painting a gun. So today what we're gonna do is walk you through one of my builds step-by-step, step, how I would apply spray paint to that build. And then at the end of the video, we've got some guys from the shop actually bringing up some builds. They're gonna apply some spray paint to those. We're gonna talk about it and dive into the topic of how to spray paint your rifle. Let's get into it. As you guys saw from that little B-roll intro there, we've got everything taped up. There's a couple steps that I go through anytime I'm gonna spray paint a rifle. And if you've ever heard any auto body guys or anybody that's around paint talk about their process, you guys all know that the quality is more so in the prep of the item than the paint itself. Now, there are a couple things that I would recommend that you do when you're doing some spray paint like this. For example, I'm gonna be actually painting over the new Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 8 first focal plane. I know some people are gonna be upset about that, but I'm gonna just spray that because this is gonna be a gun that I plan to use for coyotes. So I want every inch of it covered in camouflage. I also have the new cloud rain light on the front and I didn't want the actual lens to get any overspray on. So I'm gonna cover that. On the scope, there's a couple different spots where I added some tape to cover different laser etchings. On this side, this is the illumination knob, so I would like to see which power level I'm on with the optics. So there's just details that typically you wanna take into consideration if you're actually gonna be spray painting your rifle. I know some people will go to the nitty gritty and actually take rails off, take uppers and lowers apart and things like that. And when I do Cerakote like my 10.3 over here, which I've done myself, I have a shop at home where I do some Cerakote, I will actually strip every single thing down. And this is extremely time consuming most people don't have the tools required to do Cerakote. If you do have the tools required, this is gonna take you eight to 10 hours if you're just doing a one-off build, even in a single color like this. So the most economical method for most folks would actually be to do what I'm doing and actually grab some Rust-Oleum paint and some various colors, prep your gun, and get at it. And ultimately, the only thing that I'm worried about with a gun when I'm spray painting, remove all that oil. You don't want tons of oil because there's a misconception that if you spray paint your gun, it's always gonna be tacky and sticky and gross. And if you've ever held a gun that's spray painted that is all of those things, the reality is somebody probably skipped some prep steps and that's why their gun is still sticky. So I've got a couple different colors here and I don't use camouflage paint. I don't think that it's necessary, but I do like the Rust-Oleum two in one. It's paint and primer in one. I feel like it dries really quick, covers really well. And for this particular gun, we're in southeastern Pennsylvania. So I've got two different colors of brown. I've got some gray in here, some white, because I do a lot of predator hunting in the snow. And we've got some green in here as well. So I'm just gonna get into it. And this is gonna be a little bit of a one take for you guys. And the first bit of encouragement that I would give you is there's not really a rocket science to this. And one of the great things about spray paint is you can always adjust as you go. So once you lay down a coat and maybe you don't like what you've done or you wanna add a little bit more color here or there, you're not locked in stone. As long as you're not building up three inches thick of paint, you'll be good, it won't affect the function of your gun. The other thing that I'm gonna do is keep the dust cover closed and I do have one magazine in the gun. Typically when I'm hunting my primary mag, I like it to be camouflaged just like the rest of the build. So we're gonna start on this side, guys. The color I'm starting with is Satin Espresso. So we're crunchy, we're crunchy in here, guys. We're gonna do some coffee flavors. And I've got my apron real quick. Shout out to Blue Alpha because Jesse and Kurt really outdid themselves. We've got the TA logo on the front here. We've got the Blue Alpha logo on the bottom. Look at this, guys. You're out here spray painting. Put some cans of paint. 
in my pockets, you know, maybe a gun or two. I could have my chest rig underneath it and have full reloads ready to rock. But either way, they sent it to me as a gift. And honestly, I'm not really much of an apron guy, but I couldn't think of a better situation than right here to not get my clothing all messy. So let's dive into it. We're gonna do some espresso. So what I'm gonna do with the espresso is sort of what I did with Giggles. I'm gonna follow the outlines of the gun with this deeper brown, and it's gonna bring out some pretty cool colors. So let's just start hitting that. So again, I'm, I'm just not applying this in a crazy, crazy method. I'm just hitting some access or accent points there. Anything that has an edge, I'm just gonna go down through. And now some of this is gonna show through as we bring out other colors as well. Now, obviously this color is not really the most prominent color in my area, but it is gonna blend some colors really, really well. I feel like I'm on a cooking channel. I just have to, I have to throw it out there. I feel like you guys are watching a cooking channel in action. So here, let's prop this guy up, flip that bipod down. And now, again, we're gonna try to not get it all over my hands, but we are gonna follow a lot of these contours. And now between these coats, I am gonna have to let this gun dry a little bit. So this isn't gonna be a true one take video. We'll jump around as needed. But you wanna also make sure that you do allow adequate time for this spray paint to adhere. Because if you just start gobbing different layers and you start doing all kinds of crazy stuff, if it doesn't dry, it's gonna be sticky and you're gonna actually scratch it off before it has a chance to adhere. And those processes that we did at the beginning with the acetone pulling all the oil off and then this little Brillo pad, which is just a normal kind of pad that you would find. It's an abrasive pad at any hardware store. That kind of stuff is gonna scuff that aluminum anodized surface a little bit and give some ridges for this spray paint to actually adhere to. So that's it, I think, for that color, guys. I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and then we're gonna actually add a whole layer of the gray. And I know that people often think, oh, there's no gray in the wild, there's none of these colors, or whatever. For one, there's many animals out there that are sort of colorblind, so we're looking for patterns and shapes and things that are gonna kinda distort the actual outline of an item like a rifle. But also, in nature, there's not really any blacks. There's just different shades of browns, greens, grays, and sometimes white if you're out in the snow and things like that. But yeah, guys, we gotta let this dry for a couple minutes, and then we're gonna keep going with a couple different coats of colors. Now that that first coat is tacky, I'm not really waiting until it's completely dry, I'm gonna add some of the gray. Now, I do have a heat lamp over here. You don't need one of these. Honestly, guys, you could also do this hanging up. And if you would hang your rifle, it's gonna be a little bit easier, less chance that you're gonna have wet paint get stuck all over your cardboard and stuff. But either way, like I said, this doesn't have to be perfection. We're just trying to add some camouflage. So I'm gonna add some gray in here to break everything up. Now I'm not gonna hit everything with gray. I'm gonna leave some of that brown shining through. but I am gonna to touch everything with a little bit of that. I'm gonna to try to pick this guy up without completely ruining that fresh gray. I'll do the same side to this side. And I often kind of like the whole overspray look where you don't really have a solid coat of paint you really just have some speckles and things like that. I think that that adds some character to a build like this. So now at this point, what I'm gonna do is take my other greens and really just kind of wrap around the whole thing. And I'm gonna alternate between that other brown, which is dark walnut, and I'll throw a splash of white. Now I'm not as concerned right now about waiting until this is completely dry. I'm gonna add all these colors, then let it sit in front of the heat lamp and let everything kind of get nice and set up. So we'll add some green here. We're gonna start on the muzzle end. And again, we're just trying to add some contrasts and some different colors, different places. And I tend to try to kind of follow, if I make a line on this side, I'm gonna follow that and wrap that over around the other end. We'll get some accents there on the magwell. Now we'll go like this. 
right up over the top and down through. Like I said, it's not rocket science and if I end up not liking what I'm putting on this, the cool thing is I can just change it and that's what I really like about spray paint. Downside whenever I'm doing any Cerakote, once it's on there, it's on there and you've got to sandblast it off if you don't like it. Now the one downside I would say is that the spray paint is hard to get off if you really want to get rid of it. So once you've gotten to this point, you pretty much committed yourself for life to have a spray painted, a spray painted rifle. So let's do some darker green here. I'm just gonna try to mix this up a little bit. It's a little bit light on the tops. Actually, you know what? That is more of a green than what I want on this particular one. Try the hunter green and see. I don't really want pastel colors on this. I know that the last color that I just sprayed was a little bit along the lines of that, but at the same time, I would like some more realistic colors. So that's a darker green. And we'll hit that with some black and really kind of make that fade in. All right, let's hit some of this with that dark walnut because I really want to tone down that green. The other thing that was kind of crazy that I just realized when I was at the hardware store is about half of their different colors and spray paint were gone. So we actually had very few colors to choose, which was sort of strange to me. Never seen that happen. So now at this point, guys, I'm just gonna touch some white, mix it in here, just a little bit in a couple spots. I'm gonna stay pretty far back. Ooh, that was a little bit too much. But like I said, guys, the cool thing about this is at the end, I can touch it up with some darker colors and I'll use the netting to actually kind of blend a lot of these colors together. So again, not a rocket science, nothing to be worried about if you're not 100% happy with where it's at. So now my objective as we go forward is I'm gonna blend some more of those grays and blacks and other colors into each other at the end here so that this is a little bit more of a realistic breakup and I'm gonna use some of this netting in a couple minutes to kind of blend some of those colors together. So that's where we're at for now. I'm actually gonna move the heat lamp over here, let this thing kind of cure, and then we'll dive into those final colors. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is add back in some of my gray, because I wanna darken this thing up, but I'm gonna do it with some alternating patterns here. Tone down some of this with the browns. Again, I'm just gonna hold this here. Get some of that stuff unrolled here. Again, I'm not really going for science. I'm just kinda going with what I feel like doing. Hitting some stuff, making some texture. And you can always change it. That's the beauty of this. Let's do that gray again. I probably should wear gloves. I always forget to do that and then I end up regretting it big time. So that's one thing you guys can keep in mind. All right, we're gonna use a little bit more of that dark walnut, tone down some of this stuff. I don't want this gun to be too bright because I need it to blend in with various terrains but I do want some of that color to actually break up the profile of the rifle itself. And I feel like this dark walnut color will do that really well and kind of take away some of that really bright green. I was playing a little bit more with that, what is that called? Hunter Club Green. And I feel like this actually, although I didn't like it at first, it's more of like a blue a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit in some of these places. Now I know I said black doesn't exist out in nature. It really doesn't, there's just different shades, but I do wanna add a little bit of dark back into this. It'll help tone out some of those really bright colors. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna keep alternating until I get the kind of color blend that I'm looking for.
So as you guys can see there, having something like that will give a little bit of that texture back into that rifle. It's not critical, you don't need to necessarily do that, but if you want to give a little bit more texture, you can always do something like that. You can use twigs, you can use pieces of poster board, you can do all kinds of stuff. Ultimately, it's completely up to you. Your rifle is your palette. You guys can do what you want with it. Again, I feel like I'm on a cooking channel. All right, let's add some of this oregano. That sounded pretty cool. So we'll get a little splash. Get some of that in there. Get a little bit of that up here. Get a little bit of that right there. So now we're getting those tans back in. Now, tan doesn't really exist a whole lot in the Northeast. I mean, it, I guess it depends where you're at, but I do like to have some earthy tones as well. Now, as we get into summer up here where, I, where we're at, you'll have a lot more greens and, and colors like that. But again, not necessarily as concerned with necessarily having the perfect blend of colors. I'm just trying to break up a signature of the gun and make it a little bit more camouflaged out in that wilderness. So now let's do a little bit darker tan here. And ultimately at the end here, what I'm gonna end up doing is hitting that oregano again and really kind of blending in some of these different surfaces. Let's do this. Another thing you can do if you don't like the mesh that you have, you can actually double it up. I find that sometimes that'll give me a better layout of the pattern that I'm looking for and not be quite as pronounced, but just give a little bit of that breakup. All right, so now we're gonna do those last two brown colors again, and then we're gonna let this thing dry up. And then if there's any finishing touches, what I'll actually do is just come through, analyze what I've done, and then I'll tweak it at the end. Like I said, that's my favorite part about spray paint. You don't have to have the perfect setup the first time. You just are trying to do just enough paint so you don't have any runs, but you get really solid coverage. Cool, so we got Brent here, and Brent has, uh, it's a stock for your 700, right? Mm -hmm. So just give a quick rundown of what your objective is for this. So essentially I'm just trying to take my FUD rifle and just make it a little more versatile. That's kind of that's kind of the case Was here. this a black stock yes, when you started? Yes, it was a black yeah, yeah. synthetic. Essentially I'm, it's gonna be dual purpose, so yeah. it's gonna be used for hunting, but then you know, for whatever else I could possibly need it for. So what's your objective then? Are you going to add some other colors or are you going to keep it kind of a one color deal? I'm putting this down so it's not a black base layer. And then I'm going to add some browns and some blacks just because most of the time when I have it in the woods, it's going to be browns, browns, you know, different earthy tones. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to kind of do patterns. Um, so basically just to break it up so it'll be, um, resembling limbs essentially. Yeah, yeah. So you're just um, trying to do kind of like a little yeah. bit of chaos, a little bit of color yeah. change just to break up that profile. Yeah, because if, if if it's in the summer or the spring or something yeah. like that, there will be leaves on everything. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I, I don't feel like I need to put green on there necessarily. Sweet, well let's keep spraying, yeah. keep at it. Alright guys, so obviously this is a 16 inch IWI Zion 15 and my objective for this thing being in southeastern PA is to make it kind of, you know, like foliage for normal woods, but also I really like uh, FDE and tan and stuff so I'm going to try to kind of match it to this jacket because I like wear this jacket all the time. So that is basically what I want to do, just typical camo.
Six. What are you wrapping up right now? Uh, this is my 16 inch mid length build and uh, I have uh, some foliage and some flat dark earth and some gray. I'm doing just a basic camo, something to break up the pattern of the rifle. And Leo did something a little different. It's called Ceramicoat. I have no idea what this mm -hmm. stuff is, but it smells weird. It smells bad. But did this, how does this compare in your mind to regular spray paint? Just using it right now. Um, I think it has a better texture to it. It's much more uh, durable as far as I can tell. Yeah. Uh, I sprayed some test pieces earlier and it was really scratch resistant in comparison. Yeah, so. so you also, you don't have any real browns or anything in this. You went with a foliage green and what was the other? Kind of uh, like a flat dark earth? Flat dark earth and yeah. some gray. Nice, so we've got a foliage style build here, which is pretty sick. I think it's turning out pretty good. What else are you doing before this is wrapped up? You're just doing some fine tuning? Yeah, yeah, I just have uh, just some angles cut on a piece of paper, something you can conform to the shape of the rifle. Yeah, so this is just one of the other things that you can do. We obviously use netting. We have other methods that you saw, some tape and things like that you can use, but you can use something as simple as a piece of this kind of cardstock stuff. It's like poster board cut it into the shapes you want, hold it where you want it, and then spray on pattern. So yeah, super simple. It looks good, yeah, it man. Helps, helps you get a hard line and you can just fade off. It really helps to break up the pattern of the rifle. Yep. So, Like I said, when I was in the intro, sometimes the biggest thing that we're trying to do is actually just break up the profile. You know, mm -hmm. Colors, anything other than black can really blend in in the wilderness. But sick, man. Yeah. Sweet. Well, let's keep spraying. Thanks. So as you guys can see, spray painting your rifle is not super complicated. And it's definitely something that I would recommend that you do to your rifle, especially if you use that gun for more than just flat range work. If you're out there hunting, or you're hiking around, or you're in the wilderness at all with any of your rifles, it's not a bad idea to have some camouflage on your gun. And we were able to do essentially six different builds in one evening. So it also doesn't take a ton of time. Now there's some downsides and there's some considerations with spray paint. The one downside, if you care, is the fact that over time it is gonna wear a little bit. If you want a permanent finish that's never going to wear off or it's going to have less chance of wearing off, definitely Cerakote might be the best move for you, but you're also gonna pay a premium for that. At the end of the day, you can get a really nice product with a spray paint job. You can do a very strategic pattern and have something that looks really neat like my lever action rifle that we did tonight. Or you can do a little bit more of a chaotic blend of just natural colors and end up with something like my 16 inch select fire bill here. So ultimately the choice is up to you. Hopefully this video helped you out to show you different ways that you could attack this kind of a project. And I'm hoping that it showed you that it's also not super complicated because I know that oftentimes people think things like this are just harder than they actually are. So guys, if you learned anything in this video, if you appreciated anything that we've shared or if you have any comments or suggestions for future content or videos, hit that comment section down below the video. Please check out our website. Consider supporting us there because supporting us by grabbing some of those products on our website is the only reason why we can keep doing videos like this. So guys, please like the video, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Stay well. We'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah.